Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and this might be my final video on subject CT5 as we talk about the final section in chapter 14, which is standardization. Okay, and essentially what standardization is, it's instead of having, um, I don't know, when you look at the mortality tables, you see that there's a different mortality rate for every single age. And that's all good and all, but what if you want to compare a population to another population? So you want to compare the city to a little town, and you want to know what's the difference between their mortalities. What we need is a single figure indice. And yeah, as you can see, the advantages of having a single figure indice is that we can then compare mortalities of different populations. And what we're going to see is that these things are actually quick and easy to calculate. Um, they're based on weighted averages, so they reduce sampling error, and they're designed for comparison um, with mortality in a standard population. So you could even have standard population and you can compare your different populations with. They do have a few cons. They do lose information, but this always happens when you summarize information. Um, the weights could vary between populations, and we're going to see that that's one of the areas that the figures we're going to go into try and combat this distortion. And they do require extensive data, and there are limit, and this limits the situations um, that they can be used in. But yeah, those are the pros and cons for standardization. Let's jump uh, straight into it. And what we need to know is the notation. Okay. So very quickly, I don't know if you want to just pause and read this because I don't want to waste too much time. Um, so pause. Okay, unpause. Let's carry on. Okay, now that you know the notation, we're going to be looking at the very first measure. This is the crude mortality rate. And this is very simply uh, the actual deaths divided by the total exposed to risk. Okay, and what's nice about this is it gives a weighted average of the age-specific mortality rates. And um, so what this will do, it'll give us a figure for a population and if it's greater than another figure for another population, we know that that population has a heavier mortality. So, if, so sorry, that sounded a little bit confusing. So if town A has a crude mortality rate of 10 and town B has a crude mortality rate of 2, then uh, town A has five times bad mortality or five times heavier mortality. So I do have a little example um, to calculate the crude mortality rates. You can see I've just linked it in with the notation. Um, the calculations are very straightforward and we get our answer. However, this one's quite interesting and we're going to use this example for the rest of the video. So let's look at it. What we've got here are two populations. We've got the one called the study group and another one called the standard population. Okay. This is the amount of people at each age, and this was the observed mortality rate. So we multiply those together, and we can see the observed number of deaths. And same with the standard population. Now, if we look, we can see that this value here, the light blue values, are all greater than the values over here. Okay, So we would expect the crude mortality rate of the study group to be heavier than that of the standard population. However, when we do our calculation, we see that the opposite happens. The study group has got a lighter crude mortality rate than the standard population. And why is this? Well, remember we said that there could be some distortion. And in this case, there is. Look over here. We've got the biggest number for the standard population is with the old 60 year olds and they've got a heavier mortality whereas our study group the biggest number is here uh, between the 30 and 44 year olds who have the lightest mortality so even though for each one the study group is heavier because more people are in the lighter age group it distorts the value okay so what we see is the example of the well the pros of this method is that it's easy However, we could get some possible misleading results. So the rest of the values that we're going to look at, or measures we're going to look at, 
try to deal with this uh, distortion. So the one way you could do it is do a directly standardized mortality rate. And this is where you use your observed mortality rates with the standard populations exposed to risk. So you use their age structure. And what's great about this is now we're comparing apples with apples because remember the crude mortality rate for the standard population looked at these two guys. Now the only thing we've changed has been the mortality rates and here we can get a more accurate crude mortality rate and we see that it's higher. Okay? So now why don't we just use this? You know, because I mean it's great. It reflects the differences in the age specific mortality rates and not the difference in the population structure, which we're not that interested in. The problem though is that this requires more information as you're going to be needing the mortality rate at every single age group, which you may not have. So how do you get around this? Well, this is where the math starts getting a little bit complicated. We calculate this thing known as the area comparability factor. And it's the crude mortality rate of the standard population divided by this thing over here, which is it's a new thing. It's using the study group's pop, um, population and age structure, but the standard group's mortality rates. Okay, And what this does is it gives us a factor, this 1.31. Now, what does what could this mean? Okay, well, let's think about it before we look at the answer. The only thing we're changing here, or the only thing that's different is the age structure, the study group. So what this is doing is it's comparing the study group's um, age structure to the standard population's age structure. And by getting a value of 1.31, okay, this means that the study group is weighted towards lives with lighter mortality. Okay. And therefore, the proportion of lives in the study group with light mortality is higher than that in the standard population. And because it's not one, we can therefore expect distor distortion. But that's not all that this area comparability factor is used for. We can also use it to calculate the indirectly standardized mortality rate. And what we do is we simply multiply that by the crude mortality rate for the study group. And what this therefore does is it gives us the indirected standard mortality rate over there, which we'll see is very similar to, if we scroll all the way back up, to our directly. But remember, this one required a lot of data. This one doesn't require that much data because we have this, we have this, and we'll know this. It's just the blue, the light blues that are hard to get to. So what we can do here, and well, you might say, but, but hold on, MJ, you need the, the observed mortality here. Well, not really, because in the exam, you'll see that this is normally, they give you this value together. This is the actual deaths. So they'll give you the actual deaths. And in the exam, you sometimes have to either calculate MXT um, or you won't have it to work with. But yeah, this one's quite great because, like I said, you can therefore use it. And the advantages, it requires less data, and it's a good approximation to the directly standardized. And it removes that effect of the differing population structures. And um, finally, what we've got is the standard mortality uh, ratio. But let me just have a quick little pause. As I'm back, um, sorry about that, the phone rang. Um, so yeah, what we were doing is we were talking about the standardized mortality ratio. And this is the final one um, in standardization. And what this looks at, it looks at the, the ratio between the mortalities. And it does that by letting them use the same, um, the same age structure. Now, whether you use um, the study group's age structure or the standard population's age structure, you're still going to get the same result. So the question then is, why do we use the study group's um, age structure? And the reason being is, remember, MX plus T, or MXT, is very difficult to find by itself um, on its own in, in the wild, or you know, when you get your data and stuff. So this will normally be combined as, uh, as something known as actual deaths. Whereas this one, you'll normally have by yourself. It will be in the tables. 
and that you'll know because of the people that didn't die. So what's nice is you can then combine this here, create a new function here, and then what this does is it gives you a weighted uh, average of the ratio of just these guys over here. And it will, it's quite nice, it can tell you which one is, um, you know, which one's more heavier. If it's, uh, if it's less than one, then the study group has a lighter mortality, that means it's more over here than at the top, whereas vice versa, it means more deaths in the study group than expected. And um, yeah, that's, I mean, it, it's not difficult, um, but what you guys need to do is learn all these various formulas that I've spoken about. Because in the test, um, they don't give you the formulas, so you must learn them. And they can get quite tricky knowing which one goes to which one. Um, so try and understand it, and that will aid in remembering which one to use. And then finally, I've got like a little example where you can see we've just used this and we've got the standard mortality ratio for the example we've been doing. I then made this little chart here. It's just um, the different measures and what information they use on. And I thought it was going to be more useful than, it turned, than what it turned out to be. Um, but I will leave you guys with my little cheat sheet. And um, I'll just move this up over here. It's not, yeah, there we go. And as you can see, this contains all five of them in a nice little summary manner, little description um, over there. And yeah, that is the end of the course. So well done um, for getting it this far. And all the best for your exam. And yeah, feel free to subscribe. Um, if I study another subject, I'm going to make the videos again. And I might put on some other fun random videos um, if I ever get bored. So yeah, subscribe and hit the like button and yeah, leave a comment in the comment section below. And that is the end of subject CT5, Life Contingencies. So all the best with the remaining of your studies. Remember to do lots and lots of past papers and yeah, just to give up your best. And remember, it's not the end of the world if you fail because there is the next exam session, which is just like in six months' time. So don't put unnecessary pressure on yourself, but do work hard because you want to get these things done as soon as possible. And yeah, otherwise, uh, all the best. I'm MJ, the student actuary, and thanks for watching. Cheers.